just talked with Julian, and he said he's already reached out to you and your agent. Uh, is there a bit of a relief that, that something that there's going to be progress here uh, towards the end of the deal? Um, yeah. We've, uh, he, I had a short conversation with him um, after the game, and like you just said, he, he, he reached out to my agent. Um, so that's all that, that we have right now, but for sure, hopefully there's there's some discussions and, um, you know, you got to start somewhere. So looking forward to that. Are you confident that you'll get done? Uh, it's tough to answer when um, we haven't even had a discussion yet. So we'll have to have those discussions, but I'm certainly, like I said, excited that uh, we're going to have those hopefully soon and then we can go from there. Yeah, it, it, you know, when you don't have control of the situation, I think it's, you know, you just have to come to terms with that. And for sure, there were times throughout the year that um, you think about those things and in private conversations with friends and family and mentors and things like that. But for me, I just, I tried to leave that at, at home. And when I came to the rink, it, you know, never crossed my mind. It was just go out there and play and try to help our team just like I've always done. And, and that was something that, you know, I told Julian at the beginning of the year when when we said, OK, there was going to be no contract talks that, you know, you won't have to worry about that affecting how I prepare or how I play or that coming into the locker room. So I said what I needed to say at the beginning of the year. And, and that was kind of it. Expanded without Kalorn being here and Pat Maroon being here. Julian really talked about your leadership just kind of expanding with all those other voices in the locker room. Yeah, I mean, listen, it is what it is. We we lost. We've we have lost some amazing leaders throughout the the last couple of years. And being a leader on this team, it's not just one guy. It's never been just one guy. It's been collectively as as a group and. It just gave an opportunity for other guys to to step up, and you know some guys are a little more comfortable in that regard than than others, and some it's going to take a little more time for them to to feel confident about certain leadership situations. But um, for me, I I don't think it changed too much. I mean, I, I've tried to just be myself throughout every season that I've been captain, and you certainly learn different things along the way, and I'll continue to learn. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I don't listen. It's still pretty, still pretty fresh. We're gonna get together as, as a team in the next couple of days, um, like we always do at the end of the year. It's it sucks when you know you're not celebrating with the Stanley Cup, but um, there's certainly still things to be proud of from this season. And um, listen, the guys have been since day one. We we haven't really talked about that scenario happening, so um, hopefully that's not the case. especially March, what changed within the group, uh, aside from technically on the ice, but what was maybe said that you share with us or what was the mentality that changed? Yeah, I don't know if there's an exact moment, but, you know, I know there was um, some discussions throughout the organization that, you know, especially the guys that have been here for, for the Stanley Cup runs, that we just needed better. And sometimes it's not always fun to hear um, but you do have to take a look in the mirror sometimes and say okay we need to just play better and the, and the players that were here myself included needed to play better and I think we did we responded well to, to that and that's that's always good when things aren't going right and there's some adverse times whether it's just tough luck bad play injuries you know there's no excuses at this at this level in, in the NHL, you either you're going to dig deep and go on a run and make the playoffs or you're not. And that's why I am proud of the guys for, for the way we responded to that. And I think it was a little bit of, you know, probably weren't playing up to our potential at the beginning of the year. You know, some 
some tough luck in, in the injury department. Um, but I think down the stretch, we, we played some, you know, much better hockey and that's what led us back into the playoffs for sure. Well, you do appreciate those because you realize how, like you said, how close it is really between, you know, a first round exit and a Stanley Cup finals appearance. Like, and I know we talked about it even when we went to the finals for the third straight year, you know, game seven against Toronto. Like, you're either out or you got a chance to move on. And when you do have a chance to move on, that's when the ball gets rolling and the confidence gets there and you can go on a run and... That's just the margin of error in our league. That's how close it is. And that's why, you know, when you reflect on the season after you lose, you know, it's the, oh, I wish we could have done that or that should have been better. Or, it's too late at that point. And that's the frustrating part because I think our group, even the way we played the last two, three games of that series, I thought, you know, if only we came out that way, maybe the first or second game or you look back and just that urgency, that, that passion that we played with. And yeah, we didn't, you know, maybe get the bounces or the calls that we wish we could have. Um, but we, we had gotten some of those bounces in years previous and it's just that close. And, and that's why it is frustrating when you don't win because it's, it's still there. Like, you know, that's a really, really good team, cup favorite team in Florida before the, the playoffs started. And, like I said, you tip your cap to them because they found a way. But I do believe that we could have won that series. Do you still believe that this core has, has got the ability to, to win another cup? Oh, for sure. Um, you know, I, I think the window is, is certainly open when you have some of the premier players at every position. You know, you look at all the teams that have won the cup in the last five years. You know, you talk about, you know, really good defensemen, an elite goalie elite forwards like we we have all that you know you need you need complementary pieces for sure and you need some depth and you know looking looking back um you know I thought guys that needed to step up especially during that stretch of trying to get in the playoffs did and guys are going to continue to grow I mean you look at you know Hagel and you look at Paul and and those guys and the roles that they've come into this team you know you look at the back end, how many guys played their first NHL game this year and the goaltending situation. Joe carried us those first, you know, 20 games before Vassy came back. So there's, there is a lot of things that I think as you progress, guys gained a lot from, from this year too. And, and that's what allows that to, to keep that window open too. Nothing. I mean, when you lose in the playoffs, I've I just wanted to wait for everyone to get off the ice. Wanted to congratulate our our team individually as as they went off the ice, as a lot of captains do in in the league. Um, obviously, I was pissed off we lost, and but I don't I wouldn't read anything into me doing that, you know, for any other reason than wanting to just you know wait for all of our players to to leave the ice and um that was it Steve, the last time you were playing for the agency you talk about unfinished business and that's why you wanted to say bring a copy you bought two and you're starting a family here as you enter this summer like what's important to you looking you know going towards the next contract in terms of where you want to be or what's important in the factors you're going to have in the play is that what you want to do yeah i think at the end of the day winning is still what fuels me um, being a big part of that culture fuels me. And obviously certain things have changed now. I, I have a, an amazing young family that has put roots down in, in this city and really enjoy living here and, and playing here. So, you know, from, a, from that perspective, the decision is, is, is more than just me now and and that's something that is amazing for me to to be able to to have that and be in that situation so there's there's different factors than there were last time but 
no, nothing's really changed in terms of, you know, my mindset and where I wanted to be and, and play. And, and that was here. So that, that certainly hasn't changed. Oh, this city means a lot. I mean, geez, I've been, that was my 16th season here. So, I mean, it's crazy when you think about it. Um, certainly doesn't feel that way from a physical or mental perspective because I still love coming to the rink every day and I love interacting with the fans and, and just everything that is hockey in, in this city is is amazing and, and I love it. And everyone's been great to me and, and my family over the years. And, you know, to s start something from where we were my first year to where we are now, it's almost, you know, night and day in terms of what this city and, and hockey mean to each other. So it's been fun to be, to be part of that and to, to see it all the way through. And, um, you know, like I said, hopefully, hopefully more. Uh, for sure. I've talked about it before. So, you know, my, my perspective hasn't changed. Um, you know, I'm, I'm hopeful that something obviously works out here because, you know, I, I do, I do love it here. And, and I still think that we have a chance to, to win with the group of guys that we have here. So, um, you know, we'll see what, what's, what's in store in the next couple of weeks, but, um, my my philosophy hasn't changed. And wanting to win, uh, you've seen what Tom Brady did. He took a lower salary uh, to try to put a winning team together. Is that part of your, your thought process as well? I think that's been a part of everyone's thought process in the core group of guys that we've had here in terms of what guys have have taken over the years to to stay here. I mean... You know, I know, I understand that, you know, the tax advantage and, and that type of thing, but, you know, Cooch is making nine and a half. That's probably grossly underpaid in terms of what guys are getting now. You know, Vassy, Pointer, you know, 40, 50 goals every year. You look at, you know, Matthews, what he signed for, 13 and a half or something like, you know, Hetty's making under $8 million. That's a grossly underpaid in terms of if you look at, what he's done. I mean, that's just, that's what everyone's done here. And that's why we've had the success. And that's just been the way it's, uh, it's been for this organization. And then I think that in itself is a testament to management and how they want to build a team. And first and foremost, the players for wanting to do that and, and accept that and allow the management to go out there and, and build a, a roster to, to compete for the Stanley cup. So I think that's just always been the way it's been here. You mentioned Hedman, uh, you go a long way back with him, obviously. Julian wants to resign him as well. Like, can you say about how he's involved as a defenseman later taking his career? Do you think elevated his game second half of the season? Especially yeah, I mean, listen, he's been a premier defenseman in this league for, for a really long time. I mean, there's not many that have the combination of, of size and skill that Hedy has that have – the ability to play at both ends of the ice like Hedy has and to just be a horse out there. I mean, he's he's one of a kind in terms of the, the skill set and, and the size and the reach and the abilities that he has. So, um, listen, obviously we we all get older and, you know, things change, but you adapt and you find ways to be successful. And, I mean, listen, if, if you didn't know how old – you know, Hedy was, um, you'd still think he's 27, 28, like just the way he plays and the minutes that he plays and the shape that he's in. I mean, he's just, it's remarkable to watch. Half the league has changed coaches since last year. Like what makes Cooper a guy so he doesn't really kind of run, run dry? Well, I think, you know, success plays a big part in that. As a player, as a coach, if you have success, you know, it usually means your job is, is going to be safe. But Coop is... He just knows how he knows when to push and he knows when to back off. And he he has the respect for each player, but he lets he lets the team a lot of the time dictate how things are going to go. And he has such a good pulse on that. 
And certainly there's times where we need a kick in the butt and he's there, but he's not a guy, he's not a yeller or screamer. He's, he's calculated and he knows how to read the room. And listen, Coop and I have been together for a long time and um, you could just, you see the mutual respect and the maturity of as a coach and as a player and as a captain, as a leader kind of come together as we've gotten older and, you know, you learn which things work, which things don't, you know, and, and just Coop just has an overall read of, of exactly what needs to be said and done at the right time. And that's why I don't think it, it, it does get old because we know the expectation when we come to the rink every day of what he expects. And I think he trusts that, you know, in certain situations we can manage ourselves and, and know what to expect. In your experience, how tough of a nut is that to crack? You played on teams that have been great defensively Yeah. Um, you need you need a complete buy-in for sure from from everybody, forwards included. Um, obviously, the game plan we tweaked a few things in the defensive zone this year. Um, and I think it took us a, a little bit to get comfortable with that. Um, but then it's just, I mean, it comes down to the players. We got to go out there and execute the game plan. The coaches can give us any game plan they want. We have to execute that. And I think there's certain areas that, that we could get better at. Um, you know, players, younger players that had a lot of um, play this year are going to get better. They're going to get more confident there was a lot of kind of turnover on, on the back end. And when you lose a Sergachev for, for that much time, that's not an easy guy to replace. You can't replace him. You have to do it collectively as a group. And I think, um, especially on the back end, some of the guys that, that got a chance to, to play and play prolonged games and minutes and playoff games for us this year, they're just going to continue to grow from that and that experience and they're going to get better. And then, you know, as, as a forward group, I think you look back to the identity of of the teams and why we won it. It always wasn't the high flying lightning. It was we played a solid five on five game and special teams was good, too. And, you know, I think that's the recipe come come playoff time. And I don't think it was it was I thought we played some solid hockey in, in the playoffs. And, you know, when when the game was on the line but there's just certain situations where some guys just hadn't been in before, especially on the back end. And, and they have that, you know, small experience now. 